Welcome everybody to the Synapse Philosophy Group. I'm your host, Dr. Haig John. We got an awesome crew tonight. Uh, Dr. Scott Little, we've got Jeff, we got Steve, Barry, Carol, and Alan Lichter. And uh, we got a bunch of people, as you know, come in and out. We're on D.D. Palmer's 1914 book, The Chiropractor. And we're on page 80, Impulse. We did do a little skip in there. These are textbook pamphlets that D.D. Palmer gave out to his classroom. So they got to get a little textbooky from the probably the most learned man of the time. Here's Ben Lerner. And the learned man of the time of the central nerve system, the spinal column, and, uh, you know, a true asset to humanity back in 1914 was D.D. Palmer. So we're really excited to be able to read this uh, chapter, um, and it's called Impulse, okay? Mm -hmm. So just remember, this is a pamphlet he gave out in his classrooms. Also, this is a discussion, right. and we run this sort of like D.D. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Pasquale Sarasoli's uh, self center. We get a moment to speak. He gave us three minutes to to speak and two minutes to answer questions. But be brief, okay? Um, don't condemn anybody for what they're saying. And also, we're here to enlightenment. If someone has questions, we help them. We work as a team and and together to to bring knowledge and wisdom to uh, to chiropractors. So uh, let's. Uh, we're going to begin. I'm going to read, and uh, we stop periodically so we can talk about it and discuss. Okay. Anybody have anything before we go? Thank you, Alan, for cleaning your your uh, your camera. All right. There we go. <laughs> Impulse, page 80. In our last lesson, we learned that Inuits, in the knowing without reasoning, intuits, I'm intuition. not sure. Intuition. Oh, intuition, yes. Okay, thanks. We got to look up a lot of words here. Uh, the instinct is a natural inherent impulse. Uh, unassisted by reasoning. An impulse is a spontaneous incitement in, uh, arising from the feelings of the mind or spirit in the form of an abrupt or vivid suggestion, prompting some predominated action. An impulse suddenly starts or drives a thought forward to action. And I, I want to just say, do you know why he is starting this chapter with this is because of BJ and BJ used the term mental impulse. And we know we've discussed this many times. DD didn't like that. He liked a vital force over mental impulse. So this is a jab at BJ right now, if you don't know. OK, well, the last line in this is a slap. It's literally a slap. It's come on, boy. You know, you were but a lad when I gave that adjustment to, uh, to <laughs> Harvey Lillard. Okay, what do you know is what he's actually saying, right? All right, I'm going to the next part. Thoughts are entities. They exist. They exist, are created by imagination, reflections, meditation, judgment. Mediation. And What's that? Mediation. Oh, I said meditation, excuse me. Which means via a medium right they are uh, they are elaborated now pasquale taught us and sigafus thoughts are things right we've in chiropractic that's a common philosophy that's what he's saying right now what do you guys feel i'm excited about this chapter there's a lot of good stuff in here barry you like you, you got something to say right down there yeah, you saw my eye shake there because Sigafus would talk about the fourth and the fifth dimension. Things oh, yeah. that you can't, things that our senses are limited to because we only see, hear, uh, feel, touch, taste, a very, very small percentage of what's actually out there. Yeah, it's all waiting for us in the fourth dimension. We just have to trust and ask for it. Pasquale would say, don't beg. It'll come in the right time and not a minute before. But I love that. He's giving us wisdom right here. Someone just asked, posted recently, where do you see, you know, things like this from from D.D. Palmer? This is it. This is where he's telling us you're going to manifest the life of your dreams. You're an amazing chiropractor. You deserve it. Right. It's also we've been educated to look for simple answers for the answer for the test for the problem in school from a young age. And this is more on the order of let go of the struggle and uh, and relax and the impulse of intuition comes 
Could you imagine if you're taught manifestation in third quarter? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no one's this this is this is him teaching chiropractors to be to trust in, you know, in the in the in the creator and know what you want, be specific and uh and trust, right? It's partly what I what partly the same thing I sent from earlier today on the on the on the synapse page. Yeah. Where we said uh, that in an earlier chapter here, Dee Dee says nerves connect organs located in different parts of the body so they may act in a united and harmonious whole. One important function of the body is that of will, a provision for the creation of thought. By the way, the cultivation of correct thinking is of great importance to the chiropractor. What page is that, please? 59. That's important because what we're doing here is making history. Reading Dee Dee Palmer's words out loud from 1914 and, you know, for, for generations to come. I want that just that's it's important that we're doing this. You know, this isn't for us. This is for future generations of chiropractors that may be lost might find this. Aaron, great. You, I'm, I'm so stoked you joined us, Aaron. And and Ben, I'm glad you joined us too. All right, you know, it's we're talking about thought here, as and that it's a matter of being able to create thought, and that, and we just were talking about you can create your universe and trying to touch other dimensions, and it's all about the nerve system being clear and allowing that to happen. And he says that's what we do. It's not about you know he does and he, in this book he talks in all kinds of places about specific symptoms that he finds that he takes care of by adjusting but the bigger thought running through this book is that it's a bigger thing we're doing it's the whole body works when the nerve system is working right and that's health and that allows you to connect on all levels that you're not even aware of at times and it's spiritual he's saying this is god in each one of these people and we have to we have to honor that service with each person that steps in front of us, each each person on the table, it's an altar, and you know, trusting in that level, and you know, that's where that's what the, that's what he's talking about. All right, I'm going to keep moving on. Okay, a sign, a sign, excuse me, a sign is that which communicates an idea. Speech consists of articulate sounds transferred by atmospheric vibrations. Telepathy is a communication of ideas between two minds at a distance from each other without the aid of words or signs. And, and there it is. <laughs> the power of force, the, excuse me, the power or force of thought depends upon its momentum and momentum upon the impetuous, impetuous receipt. Impetus. 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 Impetus, excuse me. Impetus, I lost my place, received from nerve vibration during transmission. Vibrations received receive their force from the amount of heat. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Vibration received their force from the amount of heat. The amount of molecular action and heat are coexistent. Molecular actions action decides the quantity of heat. The heat de uh, heat determines the amount of molecular action. The quantity of heat depends on tension and tension upon excitation. Normal stimulus is furnished by innate, the spirit, a segment of universal intelligence. Too much, again, we're right there, too much or too little excitation, stimulation is the result of overtension. Overtension from pressure displacement of the tension frame, bones, the nerve toxification. Let me just pause there. What do you guys feel? You know, he, he just threw in some important things. Neuro... Normal stimulation is for, furnished by innate, the spirit. And, you know, it's important. We leave the second part out of that often. And, and I'm guilty of it. I wear it on my shirt for my, my, my events. And, you know, if spirit, innate is spirit. And that's what he's telling us. A segment of universal intelligence. 
morbid impulses are qualified and differenti differentiated as animal, destructive, homicidal, excuse me, hold on. The morbid impulses are qualified and differentiated as animal, destructive, homicidal, suicidal, uncontrollable, and especially those of an insane character. An impulse denotes action. An impulse denotes an action, not an entity. Okay. So function, why do you think he, distinct, he makes the distinction of that last part? An impulse denotes action, not an entity. So the impulse that this is an impulse coming from the mental realm. So BJ would call it mental impulse. And the impulse, the force, the action is to unite spirit and matter. So it's not an entity per se. It's not a physical entity. Oh, and geez. on the previous paragraph too, he pretty much talks about without saying it, um, basically like three parts of the subluxation model. Uh, with the pressure, the displacement of the tension, the frame, the bones, and the nerve toxification. So here you could start to see some of his ideas. And then BJ, of course, developed them, the subluxation model. So I firmly believe that, that this part with the impulse not being an entity, it's because the action of the mental impulse is to take the impulse from innate intelligence into matter and create action, force. That's very insightful. I, I wrote the, uh, my note on the side of this is really where, you know, the subluxation models derive from. Thanks for that insight, Barry. Anybody else or anybody want some clarification from, from Barry or have any other insights? We'll move forward. Um, function. Function is the special and normal action of any organ or part of a living animal. This includes the natural action of any mental faculty. Pathological functions are those performed in a greater or lesser degree than normal. Four. This goes back to that last to that last. Yeah. Where it said the impulse, the, the impulse denotes action, not an entity. And here he's saying pathological functions are those performed in a greater or lesser degree than normal. <laughs> normal function, health, is perfect transmission of the impulses. When there's interference with that transmission, that's when you have pro dysfunction that manifests in, in many ways, such mm -hmm. as morbid impulses. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Thank you for that insight. That was insightful, too. I'm getting a lot out of this chapter. I'm glad we jumped to this one. Thanks, guys. Okay, vitality, because this force. is one of my favorite words. Force. Okay. What is it? Did I miss force? I wanted to get to vitality so badly. <laughs> force as the power which produces or arrests motion. That, that which may be converted into motion. The rate of transforming energy. I mean, if I... This is from Stevenson's. I mean, this is where he has gotten his work from. And was it uh, uh, was Simon Sensen when he was, he was on here? He was saying... This is the, about the time when Stevenson was just deriving, you know, making the 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 chiropractic textbook, and so I mean it, it's really right here. I know this book didn't surface for a really long time since the nineteen till the nineteen fifties, and it was, you know, kind of banned I think from Palmer Bookstore and all that type of stuff. <laughs> Same thing with nineteen ten, so uh, you know the battle was going on. You could feel it. It's, and this whole chapter winds up being a loop of a description as you go through the whole thing. So as we read it, you can be thinking about that, but you may need to go back and look at it again. I read it earlier today and, went, and I got to the end and went, oh, this all fits together like this. It's a whole piece from it it's a step-by-step -step progression here. You know, it, it, when we talk about it, BJ Palmer being a 33rd degree, you know, Mason and all that stuff, but I think Dee Dee was too. A lot of this stuff is very cryptic and we can find some answers once we figure out their code. I bet a code comes up one day. We have to get one of the, the Bible scholars to put it in numbers or something, you know? Okay. Vitality is the vigorous act active principle upon which individual life depends. That's why vital force, he's putting that emphasis. This is why it is so important when he talked about vital force, which is the next one. 
vital force is that principle of life which imparts energy. It is inherent in each organ of an organism. In each organ. The vital force for that organism, organ to work within the organism itself. It's not the animator of the organ organism. That's spirit. That's innate. The vital force is what vivifies. It gives life to the organs itself. So it's important. I think that's what I get from that. That's what I see as an important distinction. What about you guys? Well, you have to think a vital force. So a force of a stomach is going to be different than a force of a bladder. So the vitality is still in there. So when Nate's going to tell that organ, that instruction job to do, and it's going to perform it. Yeah. Energy is the internal inherent power, the product of activity, that which is aroused by an impulse. Nerve vibration carries <laughs> thoughts, commands, orders, known as impulses, when it, it, it when, when in transit over the nervous system as impulses over the nervous system thoughts gather force receive Im impetus which brings trend which while being transmitted the amount depending upon the quantity of nerve vibration momentum is the force of motion acquired by the movement of thoughts the impetus received from nerve vibration. Has anybody looked up impetus? What is that? I'll get your definition. Your definition. Get Impetuous. I use that word all the time. But uh, impetus. impetus. The force, the force of or energy with which a body moves. Hit the booster coil before the high fly will lose all its impetus. <laughs> the force that makes something happen or happen more quickly. Okay. 1914 English. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Now my favorite. Did I say momentum? Now we're at tone. Okay. And we need to pull the tone pieces out here and 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 start putting the quotes out there because most people get it all wrong okay tone is the normal activity strength and excitability of various organs and functions of as observed in health tone is a response of tonicity tonicity is the normal elasticity of the filamentary or thread-like structures of the body the nervous system so tone there is no tone in a corpse. Yeah. The muscle system has no tone. The skin has doesn't have the tone it does when we're alive. Our living vibration <laughs> is part of it. He goes into depth in some other places. Anybody have any other insights on that? Or like to expound on it? Yeah. All right. And to, in, to innervate is to supply the nerve force. To enervate with an EN is to deprive the nerve force. An impulse is a commanded is a communicated thought. Impulses are conveyed over the nervous system by means of vibration. Thoughts originated in man, animal, and spirit. Okay, that's an important addition there. They are forwarded by atmospheric and etheric vibrations, which is the ether. In spoken language by the former and by the latter, where the affections of one mind are acted upon by the thoughts or emotions of another without communication through the ordinary channels of sensation vis-a-vis the, uh, -vis the five senses. Okay, I'm just going to stop for a moment. So why do you think, where was that part? Why did... Thoughts originate in man, animal, and spirit. What does that mean? He spoke of the word inherent twice. The first thing he said about intuition is that it's inherent. Yeah. Like it's or consciousness. 
It's consciousness. It's like consciousness. The instinct of intuition is a natural inherited impulse. Okay. I like that. So would spirit, do thoughts originate in spirit? Well, he says it does. That's what he's he saying. What but he's that? saying that's separate from, because he's separate, what he's doing here is separating man educated and innate spirit. That's it. You've got man, animal, and, 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 and spirit. And that's why, because he talked earlier about the, the, the non, uh, the, the ethereal communication between people when thoughts are, are generated, emotions are transferred between two people without without any use of the without vibration of speech unassisted by reasoning and you know he said where he got his inspiration and he said that is a message from god in the christian world about chiropractic came to him as inspiration and you know thought not originating by him he said it, it was me right and it was a gift, a download from 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 spirit, and uh, that's where he's. To me, that's what he's emphasizing. There is, look, I'm proof positive. You're learning chiropractic, which is a spiritual download from me. Other people have gotten it, but they haven't been able to bring it to the sense that we are bringing it now. That's what I read out of those three words. There, <laughs> I'm very good at inference. All right, <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? Let's let somebody else read. Who feels like, feels like reading? There you go. Go ahead, Alan. I'm happy to read all the time. You know that. I know. Um, there are two kinds of impulses, sensational <clears throat> and motor. Motor impulses go outward and sensational inward. The motor is twofold. One originating in the mind of the physical, governs animal functions, the nerves of the of animal life. It is under the control of the human will. The other is not under control of the human will, but that of spirit and controls the sympathetic nerves of organic life, creating and continuing in intellectual existence. A sensational impulse is one which comes from the out, one which creates within a sense impressions of our environments a sense impression is no more or less than the recognition of nerve vibration, which is set in motion by the force of the sensational impulse. An impulse, a thought in transit, may be passed from one intellect to another, as, a, as, as in hypnotism and telepathy, or it may be transported from one portion of the body to another. In the latter case, the nervous system is the transmitting medium. Do you have any insights there? You want to share something, Alan? Um, th there's something stewing in the back of my brain that won't quite come out. I don't think. The, it'll, well, it'll he's, come, he's talking going. about you know that there's different the communication. He compares that intuitive communication to the same way that information goes from your brain to your tissue cells. That it's a it's a non it it it's the nerve system, but it, it and it's not the nerve system, but it, the nerve system transmits it. Uh, it, in a in a non material way. Yeah. An love... impulse does go on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The impulse does not make a circuit. Mental motor impulses go away from the central nervous system. Sensory impulses go to the central nervous system and away from the external and to the origination of nerves, motor or sensory impulses do not make a circuit. They do not circulate. Motor impulses may be of the mental or spirit. The sensory is of the mental. The sensory, Life, it, hold on, oh, oh, there. What, what is he meaning right there? The scent, uh, an impulse does not make a circuit, right? He doesn't like using inferences like machine and, and electrical. It's far bigger than that, right? Mm -hmm. Central Sensory impulses go to the central nerve system. Okay, I'm forming something too. Let's keep going. 
life, intelligent action is the response to an impulse. This is true of the voluntary and involuntary functions. The former are those of the human will, the latter, those of the spirit. So again, he's educated in an eight. Educated in an eight, that's right. The impulse in transit is the thought sent out. It always remains the same in its requirement and, and command. However, its force may be augmented or decreased owing to the amount of nerve vibration. And I don't know if it's, I, don't, I think it was in another part that, that he talks about. He talked, we mentioned before the, the bridge, the sensory bridge. And he talks about the bones being, the, in another section here, he talked about the bones being like the bridge on a violin or a guitar. And they set the tone of the instrument, and they, uh, but they don't change what's going on. They're just, they're there to, to help stabilize, but not, and 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 are functional, but don't, but normally don't interfere with what's being the sound that's being transmitted from a guitar. And here he's talking about that same concept, um, maybe augmented oh, and increased the, the vibe. He's talking about the vibrations with nerve tension. Being, so yeah. that's the. The, the vibration isn't can't be interfered with. Um, I'm sorry, my computer just told me my battery, so I got to plug it in. <laughs> well, I'll say this: it's you know we get caught up in the vitalistic with the mechanistic, and that there's the the difference between them vitalistic and mechanistic. And what he is actually saying, it's both mechanistic and vitalistic. You have to have that combination. You can't have one without the other. The spirit needs the material. We've talked about this many times. Spirit needs the material, right? As much as the material needs the spiritual to keep this whole thing functioning. So it's the spiritual with the material, the mechanistic with the vitalistic. Absolutely. The spirit, the spirit manifests through the material. 100%. That's where I was going to go back uh, a few paragraphs where, where they say thoughts originate in man, animal, and spirit, where... The thoughts are in what he refers to as the ether. They're mm -hmm. all around us. They're all throughout the universe. And through man, animal, and spirit, they are received, interpreted, and expressed through the nervous system. Fantastic. And, yeah. But we also are aware that it, it, it's not just it's throughout the universe. It's we are the universe. That innate is a part of, but apart from, universal. And so in reality, we are we are all thoughts mm -hmm. and some come through each one of us. And that's, that's what manifests through the matter that we're in at this moment. You know, as we're on this and you talked about the cosmos is, it is us. Uh, Pasquale and I, one day in Brooklyn, we're at headquarters and at self center and we go outside and he says, cause I was talking about, you know, space and all these things. I'm a kid running around, you know, 30 plus years old. I felt like I was 10 and, uh, you know, he takes me outside. We look up at the stars and he said, you realize all that stuff out there, that's a reflection from here. That is from <laughs> you. And, you know, I was like, whoa, oh, my gosh. OK. And uh, so that just brought that moment back. Thank you for that, Alan. And another <laughs> one. Right. I appreciate it. Egg, those signals from the stars were also millions of years old being sent to you way back then, too. Hey, Good time. We're part of that journey, too. We're just, the, you know, light beings expressing, right? Thank you, Lord. We ready here? Yeah. Functions performed normally with normal force produce activity known as health. Functions performed with more or less force than those indicating health is disease. Either of these conditions is life, one health and the other disease of disease. So that's a clear, his clear definition of health and disease is, is that it's the manifest, it's the, it's either the information's all getting there or it's being trans tra changed, being increased or decreased somewhere along the line. And, and either one of those is, is a dysfunction. Yeah. Pathology is modified physiology. Pathological operations are, phys are physical acts modified. Processes, which are the pathological, are but modified functional movements. 
physiological impulses may become pathological in their expression. The spiritual or organic impulses are transmitted over sympathetic ganglionic nervous system. The nerves of organic life, which ramify the viscera of the four cavities of the body, whereas the mental impulses are of the mind, under the control of the human will. They go to, they go to the somatic portion of the body over the anterior and posterior branches of the nerve, spinal nerves. It will be seen that the impulses of the spirit, innate, and those of educated, the mind, have different origins. Each are transmitted over their spe special nerves, the splank, uh, splanknoplora, in the inner or visceral portion of the somatis somatoplore to the body wall. These two classes of impulses destined for different portions of the body over entirely different divisions of nerves the one involuntary, the other voluntary, the former devoted to organic life, the latter to animal, ought not be thrown into the indiscriminate lot as innate mental impulses. <laughs> you know, he's so subtle at poking BJ Palmer in the ribs. He's like, hey, that's it, young lad. That's what he just did. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm easily amused, but... That is a, a, a poignant moment. In quotes, in quotation marks, that is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? I just I'm had sorry, to point else? that out. That's, that's a jab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That Frenchman threw in a question a few evenings ago by saying, although the lady in the head of the beautiful, it, with the head of beautiful flowing hair, has good flow of language, yet there is something about her hair that is characteristic of a fluid. I was referring to physical science, natural philosophy, which deals with the material world. However, any gentle gradual movement of, or procedure of thought, diction, or music, which resembles the quiet steady movement of a river or continuous contouring of words, a stream of language is referred to as flowing. Is it, assume, it is assumed that all intelligence, our thoughts, every impulse is formulated in the brain. If so, in what particular part of the brain? Do they originate in the pons, the oblongata, the cere cerebellum, or the cerebrum? If in the cerebrum, which half? Is it originating center midway in the corpus callosum between the two hemispheres? Why not say, I do not know? <laughs> <laughs> Powerful statement. In physical sciences, to flow is a type of motion characteristic of fluids, that is of liquids, gases, or and viscous solids. A viscous solid is one distinguished by viscosity, having the quality of being adhesive, sticky, ropey, or glutinous consistency. Impulses do not flow as a liquid, transudate or circulate as a fluid, or become softened sufficiently to run as a viscous solid. Rivers flow from lakes, tears from eyes, and the menstrual flow is periodical. Impulses are not liquids, therefore do not flow. Light, heat, sound, and impulses are transmitted by vibration, molecular action, they do not flow. Vital forces are vital force is inherent, consequently does not flow. Okay. I mean, you do realize, I mean, this is again BJ, you know, impulses flowing over the nerves. And in reality, he's right. You know, I I, I feel. What do you what do you guys think? Do you guys realize those references? I think it's interesting that he's talking about they don't flow and and I was on a call recently with uh, Rob Sinat. Um, the ICA has started a, a series of uh, uh, yeah. uh, monthly in, uh, yeah. philosophy, well, philosophy talks, and Rob was on it a, a, a few a last week, I think, on Thursday. And he was talking some of the research he's been doing, and they measured. You know, science has been able to measure the speed of of of, of information along nerves. Yeah. 
And what he's he's found that he's got research now that shows that there's stuff traveling so much faster than what travels along those nerves, and it's almost instantaneous. And uh, they can see changes in the in 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 whole body function. By they and I can't go into the details of it. I I got lost part of the way through, but it was a remarkable comment. And here he's talking. And he, if it's a flow, then it's a time frame from one spot to another. And if it's spirit. It's it's virtually instantaneous. Yeah. It's much faster than what tr nerves travel, no matter how fast those impulses are traveling along the nerves. Are you talking about communication it. within the uh, human being that is not over nerves? Well, such as Didi says it's Didi says it's always nerves. And he's, but it, but it, and I don't know what Rob's measuring whether it's over nerves or not. I can't tell you that part. Well, I, I think it was, you know, we we talk don't like to bring in other people outside of chiropractic, but I think Bruce Lipton's kind of con connected to, to D.D. Palmer, too. And He's connected he, talks, <laughs> he talks about he talks about the communication from the cell membrane through the cell nearly instantaneous. I'm pretty sure that was Bruce Lipton. We might have to. Yeah, find yeah, that. yeah that's right. Jane, yeah. James Oshman also talks a lot about that. And is the name again? Oshman, James yeah. Oshman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he talks a lot about how certain, he, his example is a figure skater, a figure skating team. And we can come up with a, a lot of things like, you know, going all the way down the, the field with a minute, 32 seconds left and time doesn't kind of stand still. I'm, I'm kidding. That's a reference to the Super Bowl. Um, but, but the idea is, is that, people who have these extraordinary gifts and ability to function uh you can't explain that by the speed of the nervous system and he talks about the matrix and the extracellular matrix and the connective tissue and the fascia and and all of these things whereby i believe mental impulse travels much faster than nerve impulse the thing about it is the deeper that you dig into fascia and so forth, that substance that we just threw away in in a anatomy lab, um, it penetrates every layer of the nerve. Yeah. And so it's not, I, I feel like because we as chiropractors uh, are so focused on on bone, muscle, and nerve, and we don't talk much about the connective tissue. And then there's this whole other world of people that do, and we don't want to talk like them because they're massage therapists or they're manual therapists, they're myofascial release people or, or whatever. But gosh, if you read this and you read that, you're like, it's not an either or, it's an and, uh, it's whatever those other two th words are that go together. But I guess in my studies, I've been I've been trying to to figure this stuff out and, and being attracted to a lot of books on fascia and and, and books on um, quantum thinking and so forth. And I'm fascinated because today's the first day I've ever opened up 1914. I've rec I've heard Jay Holder reference it in the past and always longed for a copy of it and you know heard you guys talk about i believe the uh the vibrational what, what's what's one of the first chapters vibrational nerve or uh, anyway I, the moral and religious duty of the chiropractor no, but, but but there's another one and you know and, and just i read all these books now they're just discovering uh, the ether is becoming fair yeah. to talk about and things like that. And yeah. I've read books about this whole, you know, the reality is, is that it's not what he was talking about. I really feel is there's no beginning and end of the nerve. Correct. I, I think, I think that's my, my point. Yeah. And, and we, we can measure the nerve impulse, but I, I guess in my mind, the mental impulse travels more, 
through the fascial component of the nervous system. It's not the fascial system and the nervous system. You don't have a nerve here and a fascia here. You have a nerve and a fascia that are, are interrelated. Yeah. And I believe that that he's just connecting so many different things that um, almost when I read things about think about that, it, what? That, that still said, and I read things that Didi said, they knew a hell of a lot more than we know today. Yeah. We know that Tesla knew a lot more than we know today. And uh -huh. this is just fascinating because it's just getting put together. I, I, I'm sorry if I'm bringing in things other than-, than No, the, what comes to no, mind is good. also the whole heart math thing. They're being able that's to exactly measure. Right. They're saying that the heart, it doesn't have as many uh, ner nerves- but it's radiation that they can measure goes much further, more powerful than the brain. And what so is saying about a telepathy with right. with things that are not measurable. Uh, it's it's but what he's saying. It's not the one thing. It's not the heart. It's not this. We are all that expression of innate. You can't separate it into pieces and parts. It makes it easy. It's not a mechanical machine. He really spends time. It's not a mechanic machine. It's just what both of you are saying exactly. And that we're so much bigger than the pieces and the parts. And it's all one. It's all one amazing spiritual amalgamation of material. Well, Hank, it just goes back to what you said a few minutes ago when you were talking about it's not mechanistic or vitalistic. Yeah. It, it, it's all one thing. One does mm -hmm. not eliminate the other now the mechanists want to eliminate the vitalists but the vitalists can't fun don't really function without mechanism there's there's quantum physics and there's newtonian physics the the and and, and they were right on they're together and um we certainly from an educated standpoint you know it's kind of like this there's there's would you rather go to an educated chiropractor or an intuitive chiropractor? Now, the educated chiropractor did great on his boards and, and did all the book learning. The intuitive chiropractor did all of that too, but has, has the ability to uh, take in information through his gut brain and his heart brain and his head brain. As, as you referenced heart math, five seconds before it, it it hits the uh, the consciousness and 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 so forth and it all functions together it's not an either or but i'd much rather be a chiropractor who is able to take a full advantage of his or her educated intelligence as well as his or her intuitive intelligence that's the person who is literally going to be able to restore function, vitality, coherence, et cetera. Well, that's what the name more workshops than just... is actually all about. Exactly, exactly. Don't you think, though, that when you are uh, going with the relaxed uh, inv invitation to the innate, you're educated, becomes a lot more uh, well-functioning. When you focus your attention on the relaxed state of uh, innate within you. Don't you then find your mind works better? Like the way Einstein would go to sleep after struggling with a problem, and he'd wake up in the morning with the answer. You know, that, that time between wake and sleep, you know, is a, is a very creative time. In my mind, when Stevenson mm -hmm. talks about the missing link and the difference between a good chiropractor and a great chiropractor, and he boils it down to abstract thoughts. And the excellent chiropractor has an abundance of abstract thoughts to tap into, and the educated only chiropractor merely has book learning. He doesn't have abstract thoughts. And the more abstract thoughts that we can have, then the better we are. That's the distinction between a good and a great chiropractor and i believe that the link here or the interface is one's ability to interface between their educated 
and their innate or their intuitive intelligence. And that goes back well, to what, Scott, what, I, I don't want to go too deep here, but you know, I think BJ also confirmed that when he said the ordinary chiropractor has five senses, but the extraordinary chiropractor has the other two horse in common. So I know that's kind of deep, but I didn't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, this was a good discussion, a great discussion tonight. I'm going to start wrapping it up. Well, and we could finish this up pretty quick if we can. Get, well, we won't we be able to get the rest of this chapter. Let's let's hold it. We don't need to rush. We also were getting these with Portuguese subtitles. The Brazilian uh, uh, students and and chiropractors watch this and listen to this. We put in Spanish subtitles. Okay, the entire planet is going to watch these, um, and uh, we're going to end it there. We did a lot. We'll just pick up but, but in this wait, spot. Hey, I got to say that the next paragraph relates directly to what we were just saying. Okay, this last paragraph, but we're running out of time. When it gets too long, okay, go for it. All right. Impulses are not substances. They are not ponderable, capable of being weighed. They cannot be measured by the bushel. They have no length, breadth, or thickness. They do not flow. They cannot be percented nor impeded, hindered, obstructed, or interfered with by the placing of an obstruction in their pathway. This is what I saw about earlier. The arch or the bar of the violin, guitar, or other stringed instrument, which gives permanency to and causes the wires or strings to be tensely stretched, does not, do not prevent the passage of vibration. The impingement modifies the tension. It changes the amount of vibration. It does not obstruct the course of the impulse. It simply su segment suggests it simply oh, augments man. or decreases the force of the impulse. The first part of that impulses are Let not the, substances. Now, is the, hold is on the one second. There. We're going to start with reading that again next okay. week. Okay. There's so yep. much there. It's a place to bounce off of. Trust okay. me. I'm a professional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was an awesome night, guys. I really love and appreciate you. Ben Lerner, I'm so you stoked you showed up. Carol, I love you. Barry, I love you. All of you, I love you. We had a great night. Next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. And uh yeah, we're gonna pick up right here where we're gonna we're gonna finish Dee Dee's book. All right. Good night. Thanks, Bye. everybody.